Mysteries and Bloom Perfumery. Today we have Joseph Delap here. Um, he is here to introduce his new fragrance uh, he created for Zoologist called Dodo. That's launching quite soon, uh, mid-March. And since uh, Joseph is a big expert on materials and specifically animalic materials, I can't um, not uh, ask uh, the question we get from a lot of visitors here, aphrodisiacs. Which materials work? Which materials will um, help anyone when you put them on to seduce anyone out there? So Joseph, what's your position on aphrodisiacs uh, and how they might or might not work? Well, you guys don't see this on camera, but as Oksana's talking, there are some really nice smiles behind the camera as people. <laughs> so, so I am of the opinion Absolutely. that just like when you smell really good food, what might start happening? Oh man, I am hungry. Like Smelling things can start processes happening in your body. Oftentimes we actually eat first with our eyes and noses long before we ever touch things and put them in our mouth. Uh, don't take that too seriously. Um, so I think that fragrance can maybe jumpstart the process for some people in the same way that smelling food can really rev up your appetite. Now that being said, I think that smelling something that's nice, smelling, uh, smelling something that puts you at ease, smelling something that maybe makes you smile or remember something pleasant, mm -hmm. I think that that has more of an effect of putting you in the mood than simply smelling something and being like, ah, you know, tear off your clothes. Uh, so, uh, as I was joking with the ladies before too, uh, at least for a man, I also find that, you know, treating people with respect and kindness uh, is often a big turn on as well. And so when you go out, be nice to people, and it helps when you smell really nice when you're being nice to people. So there isn't an ultimate molecule you can procure in a bottle, spray, and then um, find luck, no? Ah, uh, well, you know, I, I would say that ultimate uh, molecule really is character. Mm -hmm. uh, both of the human character as well as the character of a fragrance. I do think when things, like I said, just like a good meal, uh, a good song, anything that really hits a chord with you, I think that that is going to put you in the mood more uh, than simply just fragrance alone. And so I think it's best for the person wearing the fragrance to wear what makes them feel comfortable and people respond to the vibe that you put out, the attitude that you have, the character that maybe shows through your smile and your eyes the mm -hmm. best and it's not just based on fragrance alone. Of course, when you're walking through a busy club or a bar or down the street, it might be your nose that makes you turn the head and then you see that big mm -hmm. pretty smile and, uh, you know, who knows, maybe at some point uh, you're picking your shirt up off the floor. Mm-hmm. But where do you think this myth comes from, that there is a material you can use to seduce? Well, that's a really good question. I think that there are molecules and fragrance. Keep in mind that the materials, at least the natural materials and the synthetics that are created to mimic them, uh, oftentimes come from the reproductive parts of plants and in some cases animals are close to it. And they often will have an effect on both your endocrine and your limbic system. Mm -hmm. And so as these molecules interact with your hormones, mm -hmm. uh, again, as you anchor, settle, and calm, as you begin to relax, mm -hmm. Uh, you feel a little bit more uninhibited now that we've been talking a little bit. You can see I'm, you know, I'm kind of animated. And uh, as you relax, as your horm again, your hormone levels change. This is a little bit of like my medical background thinking here too. I think that that can also help set someone in the mood and get the juices flowing. Mm -hmm. The same way that smelling food or something can get your gastric juices, your you know, it's like it'll whet your appetite. We're, since we're talking about appetites, it's just a different kind of appetite that I think can get started. Mm -hmm. Have you ever come across any research? Do, do scientists ever wonder if there is a material which will work in this way? I wouldn't say that it's a specific name or like a specific molecule that mm -hmm. does it. Again, I think it's the combination of materials mm -hmm. that when people smell can put them in a mood. Now I know we're talking specifically about 
an aphrodisiac quality, but just think about walking down the street and smelling a bakery. Think about coming home after a long day of work and, you know, your partner or parent mm -hmm. or somebody's been cooking something and you walk in the door and it's like, oh my gosh, the food smells incredible. Mm -hmm. I think when you're in that mindset and maybe you're out at the bar, out at the club mm -hmm. and you smell something, that really puts you in the frame of mind mm -hmm. and that is what gets, that's, that's where it puts you. Mm -hmm. And so I wouldn't say it's a specific molecule. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that it's anything specific per se. Mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, in some cases, situational, mixed mm -hmm. with things that interact with our limbic system. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the molecules in here, of course, are essentially the fragrances of sexual reproductive glands of plants and, mm -hmm. anim you know, and animals, mm -hmm. and uh, roots and vegetables and all mm -hmm. kinds of things that get used. And so, mixed together, Mm -hmm. and put into a package the same way that smelling an onion doesn't put me in the mood for eating mm -hmm. right but cooking an onion in a meal mm -hmm. might be like oh gosh you know like mm -hmm. I'm ready to eat smelling an individual molecule might not be like you know let's get down and dirty mm -hmm. but smelling the composition together mm -hmm. you know the complete meal the cooked meal mm -hmm. uh, in a bottle is may well what puts you into that kind of mindset and it's all very individual isn't it absolutely there are things that I absolutely love to smell, and uh, the person next to me it might make them not even want to talk to me. Interesting. <laughs> so what would you uh, uh, suggest to people who are looking for that formula which will make them more attractive? I think whatever makes you feel comfortable and makes you smile is going to make you look more attractive than, mm -hmm. any, than the, the fragrance itself. If I were to spray something in the air, mm -hmm. it doesn't interact with me. Mm -hmm. And so by wearing something that makes me smile, mm -hmm. wearing something that puts me at ease, but wearing something that makes me feel confident, regardless of what that is, mm -hmm. I think that that is maybe the magical key to success. Mm -hmm. Being comfortable in your own skin and allowing your own you know, light and character to mm -hmm. shine through, and that's really what people are gonna respond to. Your advice is more about feeling um, better and more attractive yourself rather than uh, looking for that response uh, in other people around you. If, if you have to buy attractiveness, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think what we should do instead is focus on what makes us feel most comfortable with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, fragrance I think is a very good way of going about doing that, but mm -hmm. it doesn't mean it's the fragrance itself. Mm -hmm. I think it's more about how something makes me feel mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. people respond better to that. Mm -hmm. I know uh, I was just in town this past weekend for an event that I was helping host and we had people coming in from all over the place mm -hmm. and when they write, when they read my words, mm -hmm. they get one impression of who I am and then when they came in and were actually talking mm -hmm. to me, I'm rather tall and I'm uh, mm -hmm. kind of jovial and mm -hmm. uh, people really respond to that. Again, mm -hmm. the words are still my writing but they're not responding to my words, they're mm -hmm. responding to mm -hmm you know, the person saying them. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a lot to be said for being comfortable in your own skin. Mm -hmm. You as a woman, what do you think? Is it how a man smells that turns you on or how a man maybe projects himself and his smile and his eyes and his attitude and... I'm different from, I think, other women. I sometimes follow men in the street just trying to guess what is it they're wearing or get a better memory of the scent. Mm -hmm. I enjoy that experience in its own right. When we ask customers, when we line up several options uh, as to what is it they prefer to smell on their gentlemen when they're going out, they went unanimously for the most sophisticated and the most expensive option. Um, mainly the other uh, extreme, the most vulgar and simple cheap vanilla option. Uh, if uh, we ask them what is it they want to smell on a lady they potentially want to approach. So it's, I think, very personal. There's no recipe. Let's dissect what you said a little bit, though. You said that women generally want to smell something sophisticated that's not brash, that smells complex and inviting, and right? So I think that there's a lot to be said. If you're wearing a sledgehammer, People are going to think what? that you might hit them with a sludge, you know, like a sledgehammer, <laughs> oh, like, ah, you know? But if you're wearing something that's nice and sophisticated, I think that that, again, talking about wearing something that's a good reflection mm -hmm. of yourself, I think people are going to sense that you yourself might have 
some sophistication that if a woman, if that's what she's looking for, that's what she's going to go for. Uh, in my own personal experience, most women aren't wanting to be sledgehammered out in public. And so if you're wearing something like that, that might be communicating, that might be the message you're communicating, but it's not the message she's wanting to hear. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, probably people who watch this video get an idea of how difficult it is to answer that question. Where is the ultimate aphrodisiac? In which bottle is it? Uh, what is it I put on when I go out to uh, conquer everyone or I want to conquer? There is no ultimate answer. And again, scientists haven't found a molecule. Uh, retailers haven't found a molecule. And Joseph, again, hasn't suggested a molecule. He suggested just being nice. So thank you, Joseph, for hey, another welcome. question we get quite often here. Where's something that's a reflection of what's in here? And I think that uh, the people are going to respond to you the way that you want them to. Thank you.